We got the AMM1, we got the DD1+, Plus, we got the CC1, and we got the IMSG+, Plus, which is coming out real soon. It's been a little while since I showed you guys exactly how to set gain. Let's throw these audio control amps up on the test bench, hook up a couple of woofers, hook up a couple of mids and highs, and set it up perfect, as perfect as we can anyways. We got a four channel app here. And we got an 800 watt model block. The LC 1.800. Obviously 800 watts. This one's at 2 ohm. This one's 4 times 200 or 2 times 400 depending on if you bridge it or not. Now one thing about audio control amplifiers, they're always packed with all sorts of features. That thing looks like it has nothing on it but as soon as you pop the lid there's all sorts of dials. You sort of have to have an idea of what those dials do. They talk about it a little bit in this owner's manual especially this MILC maximum input level control seems like a great feature it's supposed to do something similar to what our distortion detector does but it doesn't really give you any instructions in here that I can see maybe I'm missing them you probably get online and there's probably some pretty detailed stuff in there I bet there is but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use our tools we'll see how they stack up against their stuff I'm positive it's gonna be really close but there's other factors involved in setting gains besides just seeing like a clipping light turn on, which we'll get into as soon as we get these things up on the test bench and get them wired up and start turning dials. We got an amp on the highs. We got an amp on the bass. One thing about audio control amps, man, these things are so damn sexy. You cannot deny that if you love car audio. All right, everything's hooked up. Ready to start playing with it. But I noticed that I need a ACR1 remote level control. All I have is an ACR3, I got a couple of these. I don't know why I don't have an ACR1, I don't know where it went, I thought I did, but I don't. And I really wanna show you guys how to do this with the remote volume knob. So, I guess I'm gonna have to go get one. There's only one place in town I know of that will probably have an audio control ACR1 in stock. Let's head over there and swoop it up and get back on this video. Go all the way across town to the one place that I was sure would have it. And uh, well, they're closed on Sunday. So I called somebody that I didn't think would have it. And uh, guess what? They're open and he has it. So we're heading over there to grab it. Hell yeah. Yep, Arden Audio coming through in the pinch just like they always do. I called up Dia. I was like, hey man, I need an audio control volume knob, ACR1. Do you have one? Let me see. Two seconds later, yeah, I got one. You know how it is, man. 
look at this. Here we are inside of Arden Audio. On a Sunday, okay? On a Sunday. Audio control. It's exactly what I need to finish up this video that you're about to see. So, I can't remember the last time Diaz let me down. <laughs> Never. Arden Audio. All right, man. Cool. Look at that. In and out the door in five minutes. Got what I needed. We finished this project. Hey, one more shout out to Arden Audio for having what I need on a Sunday. Damn right. Good to go. All right, we're going to plug it in right here. We're going to use this on the subwoofer because that's how most people will do it. You can have volume control on your four channel as well, but there's really no need to do that unless you're using that four channel as a bass amp. All right, so just to get started, the whole point of a gain on the side of an amplifier is to match itself to the output of whatever head unit you're using or whatever is in between, like crossovers or DSPs or anything else. So what we're going to do is we're going to set these gains and then we're going to set the crossovers and this thing should be able to play at full blast. We'll find out where this deck distorts at. It's going to go from 0 to 50 or something like that. And wherever this deck distorts, that's going to be our number. Then we're going to set these to match that number. So everything should play clean all the way up to that number. If this thing goes up to 47, 48, which I'm pretty sure it does. I forget which number it goes to. And you have it on 22 and it's already way too high on the bass, way too low on the highs, or the other way around. You could damage your equipment and it's not going to sound good. So, let's set it up with this thing real quick. And then we'll do the crossovers afterwards. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it on. Brand new nine volt. All right. So I'm gonna disconnect one wire off the base amp so I don't have to listen to it. Right now, this is a four channel amp, but I actually have the front channels and the rear channels bridged one to each so this is essentially the front and this is the rear but they're in stereo they're in mono but they're in stereo if that makes any sense to you so that's how i was able to get four channels onto two speakers as you can see we got a little bridge output thing on there take this off take that off for now i'm gonna get this DD1 plus disc right here now, if you have a DD1 Plus and you don't have a head unit that has a CD player, which is becoming more and more common, you can download the tracks from our website or the Demore Engineering website. No problem. So, we'll just do this here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to know is where the head unit is distorting. So, these RCAs right here are coming directly off the head unit. We'll do a thousand hertz first, which is going to be track number two. Okay, we're going to turn this up. So we're trying to determine where this deck distorts at. We're picking it up right here. So 49. 50 is distorting, 49 it is not. All right, so we're gonna jump over here to the base side. Do the same thing. Track one, 40 hertz. So this looks like 48. So 48 we're clean, 49 we got a little bit of distortion. On the highs, 
it was 50 and 49 so we're gonna stick with 48 as our number to keep everything working together with itself all right so 48 is a good number we'll leave that just like that let's plug these into this amp and see what happens now keep in mind these amps have their own built-in clipping detectors Gains are all the way down. Crossovers are all the way up for now, just while we're doing the testing. All right, so I got the RCAs back in the amps. The gains are turned all the way down. We're just trying to find out where the deck distorts. And I don't know if this amp is gonna tell me that. So we're just trying to find out the source first. The amps will tell you when they're clipping, but will it tell you where the source it's clipping? So. 0 dB, 1000 Hertz. I'm going to turn this all the way up. I don't really see anything over here. I wonder if I start cracking the gains, if, it, if that's going to happen. Okay, well, this is gain maximized. I don't know, man. We'll have to check whenever we get over to the overlaps what that is actually doing. Turn this one here. What does this one do? Same thing, I'm sure. Okay, gain maximized for three and four. Okay, so that's all the way down. The most important part of setting your gains is knowing where your deck is distorting or clipping. And uh, if you don't know that, you ain't gonna even get this far. So, let's go over here to the base side and see if we can get it to read. Just gain all the way down. Frequency all the way up, and this gets readjusted later. Um, we're gonna turn this up all the way. ACR is up all the way. All right, so 48, 49, 50. This deck is all the way up. I don't see any lights at all. I know that the deck distorts at 48 on the base side and about 49 on the high side. I'm not getting anything through the amps, but it's not the amps' fault. You're supposed to kind of know this stuff. It's nice to have the clipping lights, but you're still gonna need to know a little bit about how to set up the initial stuff first especially if you have a crossover or something in between these two. So let's go ahead and uh, set the gains with the DD1 Plus and see how it looks on here. Now right, we're gonna start out with channels one and two. And I'm gonna start turning this up till I hit 48. So if you recall earlier, 50 was distorting directly through the deck, 49 was clean, 50, 49, but we decided 48 because we wanted to match it with the base side, so 48 is going to be our number. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn this gain up until I see distortion, got distortion right there. Back that down a little, turn it up. So, we got a little distortion right there. All right, so we got distortion. And then, turn up a little bit more. DD1 Plus picking it up quick. And then turn it up a little bit more. Then the MILC kicks on. Up. Down. All right, so that isn't how you do the DD1 Plus. Right now we're gonna turn this gain all the way up. Now the gain's all the way up, I'm gonna hit read. All right, after I hit read, got 15 dB of overlap, I'm gonna change the track. To track four. And now, I'm gonna start turning this gain down. I would like to see about four dB instead of five or six because these speakers are much smaller than the power that I'm putting into them. So let's do, yeah, let's do like four.
four. Just don't breathe on it. There's four right there. Okay, and as you can see, we got no distortion on the audio control. All right, now we're gonna set the second side, just like that. Same exact way. Put four on those. Boom, done. So a good starting point when you're doing your highs is five dB of overlap. A good starting point for your bass is 10 dB of overlap. If the amp is way too big for the speakers that you're putting on it, you start working your way downwards. Simple as that. So I'm putting 400 times two on two of these coaxial speakers. I know that they can't take it, so instead of doing five, I did four. And if it's still way too much, you can back it down a little bit. As long as I know that it's not distorting or clipping, we're good. We can always go downwards. So let's go ahead and do the bass amp real quick. And then we're gonna let this thing rip. All right, we're gonna do the same thing on the bass side, but we're gonna use the tracks that you're supposed to use. This is gonna be track one. 48 is our number. So I'm gonna go ahead and start turning this up. Now I'm gonna hit read. Now I'm gonna hit track three. And this should be an okay match for these speakers. This amp actually is a little bit too big for them, but not too much bigger. So we'll do, let's do 7 dB of overlap. Let's see how it acts. Oh yeah, we better turn this all the way up. Is this still all the way up? Yep. Bass knob still all the way up. Seven. There we go. Four on the highs, seven on the bass, because we're a little bit overpowering, and we're done with this part. All right, the gains are set, and this thing's ready to play, but remember, we turned the crossovers all the way up. Now you're good to turn them all the way back down again, wherever you'd like them. That goes for your EQ and everything else. Of course, you'll need an RTA to find out where you need your EQ, but we're gonna go ahead and use disc A on the SMD CC1. We're gonna pop that in. This one out, disc A, that's a DCC1, and since this is already in the base amp, we're going to go ahead and test this one first. So I'm looking for, uh, I'm looking for 80 hertz because that's a good place to start. If you're pickier than that, you can actually choose something else, but we'll just say 80 hertz. That's gonna be track 16, as you see right here. So 80 hertz, let's do that. Track 16. Okay, track 16. Now we're gonna take this right here, and I'm gonna turn it up until I see it illuminate to where it's reading signal. Turning it up, we got signal, we're good to go. But if you see red, you went too far, too much juice, you don't need that much. All right, so there we have that. Gonna go ahead and hit read. Now we're looking for 80. Now, with the crossover turned all the way up, you can see that it's high. That's what that means, it's high. We're gonna bring this down. I'll turn it down fast just so you can see. We'll probably pass it up. There you go, see, we're passing it. Passing it, passing it. Oh, we're looking for 80 though. Boom. So 80 hertz on the bass side. It's really not super important. If you were aiming for 80 and you're just eyeballing it and you thought you were pretty close by looking at the silk screen, it might be 70, it might be 80, it might be 110, who knows. But it's not going to be super critical. It's on your subwoofer. But on this 4 channel, it's going to start getting a little bit more critical because I'm using the front channels bridged and the rear channel is bridged. So this left and this right should be set the same. And how are you gonna do that if you're guessing? You're not. So let's go ahead and move right on over here to this. There we go. So track 20, 125 hertz. We got a hot signal. And I'm gonna start turning this. Almost forgot.
isn't anywhere near that 120. I'm gonna try to line these up myself just to where it looks like it's the same. Okay, so those two look almost the same. So without a tool like the CC1, I'm wondering if those are gonna match up or not. They look just like each other. See if you can get close to that. See if you can get both those in the same frame. First crossover, just below the 200. Second crossover, just below the 200, like one click. Now let's see how they match up. This one's a little high, as you can see right here. So I'm gonna turn that down. All right, perfect. All right, since I put exactly four dB of gain on the front, and the rear bridged I don't really need to gain match them there should be pretty close to being perfect just by doing that so we're done with this this system should be ready just to turn up and let it rip let's try it out done turn that down All right, everything's hooked up, ready to go. Let this thing turn all the way down. Hopefully the base doesn't start tearing shit up on me. I'm gonna take this out. I should just change source. I'm gonna go over here to this. Got some royalty free music right here. Hopefully I don't get busted for it. All right, KK, turn that thing up to 48 and then crank that bass knob up. Just like if you're a regular old guy, got your system hooked up. Someone tuned it out of proper stereo shop. 